All right, so um, let's look at the mechanism for this reaction. It's not, it's not truly a mechanism. We're not going to account for every single electron, but we want to see basically what happens during this coupling reaction. And we're going to really outline the, the catalytic cycle. Now I say catalytic cycle makes it sound like a circle, and we are going to have a circle in the middle of the screen. So, um, and again, just for reference, we're going from an aryl halide, and we're going to react this with a, a different aromatic ring. It's going to be an organometallic. We're going to have a palladium catalyst, and we're going to get out, in the end, these connected aromatic rings. So let's start over here with our aryl halide. I'm going to put down here our palladium zero. These are going to react with each other. Let's go all the way over here. And this reaction is called, uh, we're going to form the aryl palladium halide. This is called an oxidative addition. How is it oxidative? Well, we're going from palladium two to, I'm sorry, palladium zero, to palladium two. So this is really an aryl anion palladium plus two, and then your halide. So palladium has gone from the zero oxidation state to the plus two oxidation state. It's exactly what we saw with uh, making a Grignard reagent. What happens to this? This is going to react with our organometallic species. So, aryl metal. Remember, when we, th we think of this aryl metal, we think of this as this is an anion plus some kind of metal counter ion. This could be our Grignard reagent, could be our organo zinc reagent, whatever. But this thing is going to attack the palladium and substitute, substitute out the halide. And we get to this species. This particular step is referred to as a transmetallation. Now, anything's a transmetallation if you exchange one metal for another. And in fact, you have. You've gone from our original organometallic species, whatever this metal was, could be magnesium. Who knows? It depends on what we threw into the reaction. But it goes from that metal to that now the aromatic prime ring is attached to a palladium. So this is considered a trans... we're changing metals. We're doing a transmetallation. Now in this last step, what happens is palladium sitting between these two aromatic rings is not very stable. So it slips out from between the rings. We reform our palladium zero catalyst, which we need to re-enter the cycle and go back around. And as the palladium slips out, it connects with the sigma bond, our two aromatic rings. And this is referred to as a reductive elimination. Hold on, what? That doesn't look very reductive to me. Well, it is reductive because we're technically going from our palladium-2 metal, uh, which is, this is formally speaking, this is palladium-2, this is still palladium-2, and what we spit out on the left is palladium-0. Well, palladium has gone from plus 2 to 0. It's been reduced. It's a, it's a reduction. And it's elimination because we, we pulled it out of the molecule. So this is the overall catalytic cycle. Let, let's see an example uh, in the lower right here. So let's say we took chlorobenzene, and we're going to react this with a palladium catalyst. And uh, let's react it with a different aromatic ring, and let's say we have a zinc chloride there. So here's our aryl prime metal, and here's our aryl X, in this case an aryl halide, and when these react, they're going to connect together. And we get this thing. This is our coupled product, and specifically this is a Nagishi reaction. Why is it a Nagishi reaction? Well, because we used an organo-zinc reagent. So this is a, a specific example of the coupling reaction, and it goes through this catalytic cycle, which recycles the palladium cat catalyst.